Hi, everybody. My name is Brian Platt. I'm the Canadian government reporter for Bloomberg News and our Ottawa Bureau. And I'm joined today by Francois-Philippe Champagne, who is our Minister of uh, Innovation, Science and Industry, and uh, has previously served as Minister of Foreign Affairs and Infrastructure and International Trade. I think I got everything there. Thank you for joining us, Minister. You make me look old now, you know, or you're... You're, you're suggesting I cannot keep a job in the public sector. <laughs> for everyone listening, I kept the same job for more than 10 years in the private sector, you know. <laughs> well, today we're uh, uh, going to talk about uh, innovation in Canada, business and technological innovation, and uh, where you see things going, well, where you see things right now and where you see things going uh, as the minister in this portfolio. And um, uh, so why don't we just start with a broad overview? We're in a pretty volatile time right now with supply sure. chain uh, crunch and 40-year high inflation and aggressively rising interest rates. So, um, you know, in this climate, where, where do you see things at right now when it comes to uh, the business innovation climate in the country? Well, you're right. I think what we're seeing is there, there's a lot of challenges for business around the world. Uh, I think you've seen it with supply chain. I mean, a lot of the inflation we're seeing is is supply driven as opposed to demand driven and, and i think that's where you see the limit of what central banks are able to do so what we've been uh, doing certainly uh is to increase the resiliency of supply chain you know i keep saying to colleagues around the world and you noted i was the foreign affairs minister before the time of covid when we had pp issues we had vaccines issue despite massive investments um i i think today stability, predictability, and the rule of law is in high demand and, and certainly short supply. So uh, from my perspective, what I see from investors and CEOs calling me, and trust me, my phone is, uh, um, if I could have three batteries per day, that would be even better because people are calling. Uh, they realize that Canada offered that unparalleled stability and predictability. Um, certainly uh, what is top of mind for people these days uh, is critical minerals, uh, it's uh, renewable energy, is access to market and uh, that plays very well to to Canada's strength you know we've been blessed by geography I often say um you know it always start with talent uh, we have built a, a talent pool which is unparalleled in the world uh, welcoming uh, people to our country uh, we have very strong ecosystems in the industry of the future whether it's the automotive sector uh, the aerospace sector um, we also have the resources uh, you think about critical minerals, which is becoming more and more uh, uh, fundamental for the economy of the future. Actually, we're the only Western nation with all the critical minerals. And I would say, uh, above all, is the renewable energy. You know, I think that uh, people are looking for goods uh, to uh, be greener and, and production to be greener. And that plays to Canada's strength and finally access to market. My ambition, if you ask Brian a word, is to be the green supplier of choice to the world. Uh, we're going to be producing green steel, green aluminium. I'm working on green batteries, and my next thing is going to be green semiconductors. You, you, the first thing you mentioned, and and, uh, and you came back to it as well, was critical minerals. And uh, I wanted to uh, go into that a little bit more, because when I talk to ministers and their staff right now in Ottawa, critical minerals comes up constantly. It seems to be a, a very high priority for this government right now. Can you explain exactly what you're talking about when it comes to, when you talk about critical minerals? Um, what exactly uh, are you working on right now? What kind of conversations are you having around uh, uh, that issue? Well, I feel sometimes I've been a matchmaker in, uh in chief of Canada, you know, because we have all these deposits. I mean, think about lithium, you think about graphite, you think about nickel, you think about manganese, uh, the type of minerals that will be needed to, to power many of the industry of the future, uh, whether it's in the battery ecosystem, the microchips, uh, even in the aviation with titanium. A and Canada has all of these deposits. Now, what we need to do is speed and scale. Uh, we need to do more of the refining. That's why we've been working with uh, some of the biggest mining companies. And really, you know, when I started to, with colleagues to build the ecosystem, we had on one side the, the mining companies, if you want, and on the other side, the OEMs. The OEMs were telling me, Minister, will come uh, to Canada if you can supply us. And the mining company would say, Minister, will come if we have offtake agreements. And then I think that's what we've been able to, to, to match in a way. Uh, today, uh, Canada will be uh, refining lithium, uh, will be refining cobalt, uh, will be uh, producing nickel. And, and I think what we've been able is really to have a vision from mine to recycling and everything in between. 
Uh, you've seen the recent announcement, LG Stellantis, uh, our first gigafactory on battery uh, manufacturing. Uh, you saw GM and POSCO in Bekanko. You saw BSF coming. Uh, we've renewed all the mandates in the auto sector. And, uh, you saw Umicor, which is the only uh, uh, cattle precur uh, precursor material uh, company, which is non-Asian, coming to Kingston. So basically, I think what we've been able to do is, is, is to complete the whole ecosystem. Now we're working on, on electrolytes, uh, we're working on, on, on copper falls, and we're working on magnets. So my ambition, my vision for Canada in terms of industrial policy in that space is, is to have a complete suite of, of uh, the critical minerals, but also the refining capacity in order to enable uh, the OEMs to, to uh, come here and manufacture and also have a steady uh, supply for the next 20, 30 years. And, and so I think we've been, you've seen it, Brian. I mean, uh, there's been a shift uh, uh, over the last two years where people have realized it doesn't really make sense to mine in Africa, to refine in Asia, and to build battery with coal. I think consumers, banks, uh, investment funds, are, are going to be moving from a pure electric car to a green car. And, and I think that's a space where Canada can play very well. You mentioned uh, in the conversations you're having with people, you mentioned speed as one of the uh, factors here. And it, and um, in the conversations I've had, I've, I've heard, I mean, this is a very common complaint about Canada that it takes, it, it just takes so long to get something approved and get something uh, actually under construction here. So uh, can you talk about that part of it when it comes to business investment? What, what are you working on and what can you do as minister to help on that speed side of things? Because, um, you know, we're up against global competitors on these issues. Well, it starts off in time with offtakes. And, and if you look at the capacity that, that will be needed in terms of battery manufacturing, one of the things I've been talking to the OEMs now um, is looking whether we can have our pension fund uh, basically finance uh, some of these construction. Uh, you see a battery plant is around $5 billion. Uh, if you talk to the uh, major car manufacturers, we'll need dozens of them. And, and so what I've been trying to discuss with them is whether we can use, for example, pension funds, uh, a bit like Brookfield Asset Management did with Intel, <clears throat> where you have uh, you know, patient capital coming in, helping to build these assets and then lease them back uh, in order to accelerate uh, and to uh, increase, I would say, capacity. Because that's really, I think the bottleneck is really the capacity on times of batteries. Uh, you've seen the uh, battery electric vehicle mandates in North America. Uh, you've seen the same thing in Europe by 2035. I think what we need to do now is increase capacity. So if you ask me, one of the things I've been doing is really talking to the OEMs, talking to the pension funds and saying, whether we can replicate that model where, where we have basically a bill and lease back so that um, obviously all these OEMs have big balance sheet. But if you look at the scale and the number of plants you need to build, uh, I, I think we can be creative in financing these assets uh, in providing uh, stable returns to these pension funds, and at the same time, uh, ensuring access uh, to these critical minerals in a jurisdiction, I would say, of choice, uh, because I think ESG is top of mind uh, of these OEMs. Uh, they want to make sure that they produce, refine uh, these critical minerals in jurisdictions which have high labor standards, high environmental standards, respect for First Nation. And, and I think the key, Brian, I would say it's proximity. You know, I, I, I love my friends uh, in different parts of the world. I think about Australia in particular. But one of the things that Canada's offer, at least when you think that supply chain are becoming more regional and there's more emphasis on resiliency, proximity is king. So Canada offers proximity to resources, proximity to markets, and proximity to the assembly lines. Uh, if you think that, for example, the Detroit Windsor Corridor uh, is the third uh, center uh, in terms of, of manufacturing of car in the world after China and Germany. So I think that that is playing to Canada's strength, and that's what we're really talking with the, uh, on one side, the pension funds, on the other side, uh, the mining companies and the OEMs uh, to make sure that we have a cohesive approach where we can have more scale and speed. And the other thing going on in the world right now, of course, is um, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and, 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 you know, the whole backdrop of Europe plunging into an energy crisis because it was reliant on Russia. So how much of, of this situation right now is Canada trying to, or other countries looking to Canada as well, for so that Canada is the one who supplies these minerals and it's not reliance on authoritarian states like Russia and China? I mean, how does that play into the kinds of things you're hearing right now? And, and uh, I mean, is that a, that 
would seem to me to be an advantage for Canada at the moment. Well, you know, the, the war uh, in Ukraine has been a shock to the world in many ways. I mean, the world we have known basically stopped and we are entering a different world. And, and certainly what I hear from CEOs around the world, um, they are rethinking their supply chain. Um, you know, I heard from uh, one who say, you know, when you're looking at the map today, um, there's very few countries, for example, if you go back to natural resources, who can provide that in a very stable and predictable environment for the next 30 and 50 years. Uh, people have, have, have stopped uh, and, and retracted from their investments in Russia. Uh, there's some uh, concerns uh, with respect to the impact that, uh, you know, the tension in the Taiwan Strait can have. So I think this onshoring uh, is certainly playing to, to Canada's advantage. You're right, the cost of energy in, in Europe is, uh, is, is of concerns to everyone. I mean, you've seen how much uh, the price of gas is in Germany, which is in a way uh, fueling inflation as well uh, around the world. So uh, when you talk to CEOs in Europe, a number of them have been uh, reaching out and say, Minister, uh, would really want to explore more production uh, in Canada because uh, one of the things you know, Brian, is that uh, I think the price of energy uh, particularly in Canada and in some jurisdictions, uh, I think of Quebec, for example, which is 100% renewable, uh, that's very attractive to uh, a number of companies around the world. Uh, like I said, it always go back first to talent, then the ecosystem, uh, the resources, but the renewable energy piece. And it's not only uh, renewable, but it's baseload renewable. A very stable grid also is very key for a number of manufacturing processes. So in my view, uh, what you're seeing in the world. Well, first of all, we want to help our European friends. As you remember, uh, we had Minister Abek here with the German Chancellor. We're trying to see what we can do uh, to, to support them uh, during this, this very challenging time on the energy side, uh, looking at hydrogen as well uh, for our European friends. Uh, but in the short term, um, if you're asking me, yes, I do see a, a number of CEOs reaching out and say, uh, can we shift production to Canada? Uh, how can we explore that? Because I think decarbonization, uh, you know, I was at Farnborough, uh, for example, the air show, and the word uh, on the street was really decarbonization. And that, like I said, is playing very well to, to Canada. And I think, above all, I had a Swedish delegation recently as well. Uh, people want to deal with, with countries who share the same values. Uh, that is true between Canada and the United States. It's true with, with our partners in Europe. It's true with uh, Japan, South Korea, and other countries. So I, I think you'll see more of that where people are are rethinking their supply chain in light of the shock and the illegal war uh, that Russia is waging on Ukraine and, and, and trying to think more. We had a lot of shocks, you know, we had COVID-19, we had a war. I think that, that the risk uh, appetite for a number of CEOs uh, has uh, been affected by that and they're looking for stable and predictable environments. We're uh, coming up on our time here, so I just wanted to close out by asking, um, uh, you know, at the moment it looks like we've got three years until the next election in Canada, so assuming you've got that much time, what what do you see in the next couple of years uh, as your priority to work on? What should we expect out of your ministry? What are you, what are, What is the big project for you right now? Well, I mean, for us, it's going to be the economy, the economy, and the economy. Uh, that's that's what people care about. Uh, people have been impacted by inflation. Um, uh, you know, making sure that people uh, uh, have more money in their wallet is certainly uh, the first thing that we're going to do. If you ask in terms of industrial policy, well, since I took the album of that department, for me, the first thing was around biomanufacturing, uh, making sure that we onshore manufacturing of vaccines. We went from, what, 30 million in fill and finish capacity to now well above 600 million. Uh, Moderna, uh, Sanofi, Aventis, uh, we've been uh, reshoring that, which is, for me, was key. Then we move on to the, aer the aerospace industry, and I talked to CEOs, and I said, um, you know, we want to be where the puck is going to be in 30 years, and we've made significant investment in hybrid propulsion. Um, in the automotive sector, it's all about uh, battery electric vehicle, hybrid, and I think there we've been able to, to create a full um, ecosystem to host manufacturing uh, and creating, sustaining the jobs of today, but also creating the jobs and putting that sector, which is critical to Canada and the U.S., on track for the next 30, 50 years. Uh, then I want to move to uh, semiconductors uh, to see how can we uh, complement what's going to be done in the U.S. and the EU, particularly for the auto sector. 
and finally, uh, I would say, Brian, investing in, in what I think is going to enable all, all these sectors, which is uh, AI, quantum, and cybersecurity, which are, are going to be affecting all the sectors of the economy. Uh, and I should add um, uh, the ag side, because I think in ag technologies, uh, Canada can do much more. I think we, we can, with 10 protein, feed the world. So if you ask me, the next big thing is going to be optimizing what we've done in biomanufacturing, in aerospace and the automotive, looking at semiconductor, uh, looking at the ag sector, um, and making sure we uh, punch up of our weight. Uh, as one CEO said recently, Canada's on a roll, and I intend to keep on that and seize the moment and be ambitious.